you know, I step in with Marcus J. Thank you so much, everybody, for hanging in there with us tonight as we got through a great show, a great, great show. Of course, it was the season premiere show that we did tonight. It's the first show of the new season, the fall season, celebrating two years on the air, uh, the original Green Room. Uh, of course, we started two years ago this week. Uh, on a different website but we're still here we're still going uh, we still got the original crew back to uh, still together and of course we added new members and tonight was first show of the new kind of the new era the new season and of course we had new segments and all of that kind of stuff so definitely glad we had a great show tonight and i want to just kind of take this opportunity to go around the room and give everybody an opportunity to kind of say their final words we'll start with tony um then of course we'll have sy and big group and then yours truly so if you don't have much to say then say peace if you got a lot to say hey look we on the studio so we got as long as we need so what you got girl peace no, I'm joking. Um, Peace. Had a blast with you all tonight. Um, it's good to have Big Rue back in the studio. Welcome, SY. Um, we had a good time, and y'all are not going to be fighting across me. I'm just telling you all that. So, still on the other side of him. Oh, oh. So, yeah, but I had a good I'm time. Still here. Oh. <laughs> Big Rube? Just Big Rube's distracted, but it's okay. I refuse to acknowledge craziness. Is that what it is? But he acknowledged it. Yes, he did. He did. That's Thank fine. You. Actually, I was asking her. She would answer me a question, so I answered her question. I Thanks. didn't, I didn't ask. It. I mean, I don't acknowledge craziness. Well, we 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 gonna we gonna we gonna keep it. We gonna keep it moving. Tony, thank you for being here. You yeah, can hear Tony. <laughs> You can hear Tony here in uh, in studio with us. You know, hashtag with Marcus J every second Monday of the month. Uh, she'll be joining us here in studio, and we appreciate. It. And of course, she's welcome anytime she wants. But she'll definitely be here on the second Monday of every single month. That's why Butler debuts her signature song tonight. Your song is playing. Want to tell everybody what they listening to before you say your goodbyes, girl? It is Marvin Gaye. Come get to this. Girl, you've been gone a long time. Oh, I nearly went out of my mind. You might want to catch the like Look, man. beat, and you can't, well, even I can't hear, hear it. it. That's yeah. why you, you should be singing. She, it's you still can't. my song. I mean, she can't sing. Oh, see? I mean, he's right. You can't sing. Go ahead, I mean, you really can't. Like, seriously. I mean, you can. When I get the contract. Oh my goodness. I don't want to see y'all up in the front. Girl, please. Throwing you, no. I ain't, worry about boxers, I ain't giving you no money. Throwing your Joe boxers at me, okay? Man, you ain't gonna be oh, in that. Yeah. I don't wear Joe boxers. Nah, never that. <laughs> I mean, you keep dating yourself, yo. Uh, I wear Fubu yeah. draws. Don't throw your Fubus. <laughs> don't throw your Fubus, boo boo. <laughs> Uh, They're gonna be like singer passes out. Oh my goodness! <laughs> so what you got? What's your final but, word? No, I just want to say thanks for a great show tonight. Um, thank you to all our listeners and Big Rube. Next week, I'm going to denounce the chair for a little while. You act like you have a choice. I do. No. Nah. Okay. All right. Nah. Forget it. Now I'm taking the chair back. But again, seriously. Check into the whooping cough. We're going to have the cheat sheet posted for you. And uh, that was it. See you next week. Ain't no high stepping with Marcus J. That's why Butler with her final words. <gasps> it's time for Big Rube. It's time for the smash. I Big Rube, what you got, my brother? Something. Oh, you forgot something? Okay. Yes. All right. Well, if you got one more thing, I mean, you still got the mic. Go ahead. What you yeah, got? she can just cut into my time. It's cool. Hi, William. <laughs> <laughs> okay. She had to give. Really? She had to give out I a personal. She had to give out a personal, a personal <laughs> shout out. Okay, we had to make sure that we got that in. But Lord, we don't. We ain't mad. Yeah, we sure don't, cause what? he snapped at me a few times this week. What up, bro? It'd be, it'd be, it'd be, it'd be name and everything. It'd be good to hear from you one day, William. We appreciate you, my brother. Ain't no half stepping with Marcus J. All right, Big Rube, it's time for you to smash. And what you got, brother? It's Big Rube. It's a smash. And today we're gonna talk about punks. You know you're a punk when you play in the NFL and you slap somebody and you hit somebody in the helmet. Look, man, if you're going to fight, take off the helmet. I mean, what's the point of hitting somebody's helmet? Those things are a little difficult. They're a little hard. I mean, you want to break your hand or get your finger stuck in somebody's helmet to prove a point? Come on, man. Get a grip. Hockey players. Really? It takes y'all 10 minutes to get the clothes off so y'all can fight. 
You gotta get the gloves off. You gotta drop the stick. You gotta get the and and then you leave the helmet on. What is that about? I mean, really? Stop being a punk. Baseball pitches the biggest punks of them all. Hey, I'm gonna throw a 90 miles per hour fastball and hit you in the back, and then you don't get scared and run away when they chase you. Maybe you should have thought about that before you threw that 90 miles per hour fastball and hit somebody. <laughs> Start being a punk. Now he's a fast baller. <laughs> Horrible jokes. Bowlers. Punks. Really? You're going to fight at the bowling alley. First of all, just fighting at the bowling alley. What are you, you mad because that pin didn't drop? Or what? You're mad because somebody yelled before you rolled the ball and you hit the gutter? Start being a punk. I mean, really? Golf. People. So, so the so the crowd yells before you hit the ball, and you hit into a tree, and you want to be mad. Stop being a punk. Go fight the fan. Go fight the person who yelled. Don't get mad at the other golfer who who swung and kept it going. I'm saying. I mean, really, they talked about that on TV for like four days. Four days. Exactly. That's how stupid it was. It was so stupid. I didn't want to use a real English language, even though the dude was British. <laughs> you know, basketball in the NBA, you see a couple of fights. Most of them legit until you see the dude who ain't never played a second run off the bench to try to save somebody. No, I'm full well, that's the only time this dude's going to get on the court the whole season <laughs> and get knocked out. What a punk. I'm sorry, man. That $250,000 that you're getting for that year, I don't need a black eye for that. Stop being a punk. Look, man, you ain't get paid enough to be on the court. Hey, you, ain't, you don't pay me enough to get in the fight. Nah, not me. Come ride over here and team where you say what you want. But if I'm going to ride this bench, I'm going to ride this bench strong. And if you get in a fight, Carmelo, I can't mess with you. I'm sorry, you get paid way enough to either have bodyguards just miraculously appear out there or something. Stevie J. Probably, you know, he's the most interesting punk. Because his, that, that love of hip hop Atlanta is the dumbest show ever. However, ooh, Stevie J makes it interesting. Because if you notice, after Scrappy beat him up like a season and a half ago, when somebody looks like they're going to attack him, like four dudes come out of nowhere. He got invisible guards. They just come out, nah, man, you don't need to be touching him. And he'd be like, what? And be throwing money everywhere. You know, I can respect him because he realized that him getting beat down ain't legit. He rich enough to pay people to fight for him. And you know what? When I get that big, that's going to be me too. Because you can say what you want. But the baby face don't need to be getting hit. You know, I plan on paying people to take those hits from me. Or whatever. Just like P. Diddy, when he had J-Lo, take that charge for him. You know? It is what it is. But real talk, don't be a punk. It's not, it's not worth it. And you know what? Any street cred you had just went into the negative. Just sit there and either shut up or just get beat down. At least when you get beat down, they respect you for taking the beat down. But if you can be a little punk and cry and run away and stuff, then you're just a little punk. People, don't be punks. And guess what? A punk doesn't have to be a dude. It's a big rule. It's a smash. I'm out. You know, half stepping with Marcus J. Big room and a smash. Always giving it to us in a very interesting way. And uh, say no to punks. All right, listen. That's why you in the doghouse right now because Kaz wants to know. First of all, she I gave know. you she gave you all this love. And I'm sorry, Kaz. I couldn't get everything in. You know, within I the know. flow of the show, I'm, I get it. I get in all the comments that I can't get in. But she was I, I she was she was thanking me for having you on the show. That you sound so happy. I know. And, and that's always a plus, plus, sorry. plus in all caps. Um, but sorry. then she said nothing to me. I know. I'm so sorry. And then she said, <laughs> I take all my love back. And then 
it's not just Cass. I know. Because I got another baby boo. I know. This one I can actually so see. And she is I know giving she, you she all dug kind, into me. Yeah, she's giving you the hand movements so, right now. So now um, I'm gonna give you the 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 the, the rant redo. <laughs> will you get the to, Yeah, will you the get rewind. will you get thirty seconds to get some love to your babies? I just wanna thank my babies for listening. I wanna thank my seventeen year old who's gonna be eighteen in how many days? A couple of days. You forgot? She's gonna be eighteen. I know her birthday. Okay. okay. You got a Libra over there? Nine seventeen. I have a Virgo. It's a Virgo. Okay. Mm-hmm. I, I so thank you so much for coming out with me tonight and hanging out at Legacy Internet Radio. Mm-hmm. I'm talking to you. Okay. I'll be your friend. I'll treat you to something to eat tonight. Okay. And I want to thank Cass for listening and you left your snake stuff on the chair. And you know how stepping with Marcus J. All right. I want to go ahead and get us out of here and go through my thank yous real quick. Um, I was getting some love from my man Joe. He wasn't able to, to, to get on with us, but he was listening to us. So I want to give Joe a shout out. T Hunt, K Dub, said Joy, Cass, Steven, uh, 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 I'm sorry, Simone. Uh, and everybody else that was listening, I want to give a special, special, special shout out to Priscilla Pender, who's the director of operations of Strike Pose Modeling Studio, as well as the Jersey City Fashion Week Awards coordinator for those folks who are just tuning in. Uh, the Fashion Week in Jersey City is coming up at the end of this month, and they have three honorees. Uh, and it was announced on the air earlier this evening that they have asked me to be an honoree during Jersey City Fashion Week, and I humbly accept it. So I want to thank uh, the folks there. I want to personally thank Priscilla Pender and her entire crew at Striker Pole's Modeling Studio, uh, as well as the folks at Jersey City Fashion Week. I'm honored. So that's a special thanks from my family, as well as from my Legacy Internet Radio family, because to be honest with you, I wouldn't have been on the radar for anybody to look at me as a person of influence, which is the name of the award that she has since emailed me. Uh, I wouldn't be on anybody's radar for me to be honored for any kind of thing like that unless I had my crew of Legacy Internet Radio holding me down every single week. And so that's 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 the original crew of, of Jay Grizzy, Carlton Banks, and Big Rube, uh, as well as the extended crew, which includes S.Y. and Tony and Steven Sykes and Mr. Sincere and comedian S. Lissa P. and the Dating Pool Diva and Brandy uh, and Toyana and, and pretty much every single person that has joined us here in the studio. So I want to thank everybody. Uh, for being down with me and for allowing me to be down with them. So that's my thank yous at this point of the show. Every single week, I uh, I like to go in and do my end of the show that I like to call my rant. Uh, And of course, this week uh, is definitely no different. I want to talk real quick uh, about somebody that I met recently. I met uh, pretty just the sweetest old lady. I mean, she was smiling, happy, just blissful. And it, it struck me because a lot of times you don't see people like that. You you basically just meet asses, you know. So when you run into someone who's not an ass, it's like, whoa, cool. And this lady had this pleasant demeanor, and she shared with me that she was a breast cancer survivor, survivor uh, and she had this sunny disposition that would be alarming even to, you know, nasty people. And I met her in the course of doing my full-time job, so I was fortunate enough to spend about a half hour with Mrs. P. I'll call her Mrs. P. Um, I I, I met her and and I tell you, she changed my perspective. I wasn't in a great mood today, like most of us who wake up on the wrong side of the day on Monday. Um, Of course, that's the standard excuse. Uh, I also had a different rant that I had prepared for the night, but I was just so struck by her uh, that I wanted to kind of share. And our meeting was brief in the course of the business. I was struck by her candor and a good mood and overall positive attitude on this day. And I'm convinced that the positivity that I saw was legitimately Mrs. P. So why was I so struck by her? As I mentioned to her before, we generally talk about people while and now acting ratchet. I guess that's the new word now. So acting ratchet, uh, just being downright crazy. And it's unfortunate because those are the very common occurrences that we run into every day. Folks giving each other the stank eye attitude, not even speaking. Uh, sometimes people ask me, do you know that person? And I replied, no. And I was just saying hello. And their reply would be, why? And I think that's sad. We share this space and we share this world. Why not be pleasant? 
Although some studies show the numbers are shrinking, most people come from some sort of religious background, be it Islam, Judaism, Christianity, all offer some sort of doctrine of peace and love and harmony with one another. However, we live in a time where folks walk around with the I wish a mofo would type of demeanor. Even folks who are part of one of those big three religions fight each other, blaming each other for the disharmony in the world. We talked a little bit about that earlier today. We didn't get into the religious aspect of Syria, but honestly believe that most of the wars that we deal with has some sort of not only financial, but some sort of religious doctrine. But I'm going to digress from that, leave that to another time. Anyway, I got to raise a kid through all of this mess. And it's disheartening. Because I remember one time helping a stranger jumpstart their car. And I had Mama J with me. And she was convinced I knew the person. I just said, I don't know this dude. And she was like, well, why did you help him? I was like, because he needed help. It was really that simple. We did a religion show a couple of weeks ago, as I mentioned. And we replayed it a couple of times since then. And I've made a couple of commitments in recent years that I'll share. One was to abandon specific religion for general spirituality. By doing that, I felt it easier for me, personally, to have a direct relationship with a great architect of the universe without the constraints and contradictions of specific religions. Another was simply to speak to people, just pleasantly speak to people. I got a reputation of kind of being mean and a hard ass, but the reality is, if you know me, you know my heart is pure. So there's no harm in the practice, and there is no drawback at all. You may even inspire a total stranger to spend a few minutes sharing their experience of having met you. Oftentimes, we never know who are the ones we're going to influence the most. So why not have that influence be a positive one as opposed to a negative one? And I understand that folks' religion set their core values, and that's cool for us as individuals and family units, but that may not work for other people. So let's not judge each other. Let's not hate each other. Let's help each other, and let's love each other and actively show it. And I know some of y'all going to hear me today and be like, yo, Marcus J is tripping. Ain't nobody doing all that. But really, it's that attitude that's going to keep us apart. And I've always known that, but Mrs. P kind of reminded me. So I want to thank her for reaffirming that to me today. And honestly, it really only takes one. And one last thing that I want to encourage folks to do. Reach out to your family. Real talk, y'all. Reach out to your family, the elderly, the old people, okay? And call the estranged family, that cousin or that aunt or that sibling that you haven't talked to because y'all got some kind of stupid beef. Just call them. Tell them you love them. You ain't got to talk. Just call them. Because those family members are going to be the ones left if something happens to you. And you're going to be the one left if something happens to them. I called my uncle today. My uncle is the last of my grandfather's generation. My family reveres him and my aunt. And they have nieces and nephews and grandchildren. I don't know who calls them or who visits them. I know that I hadn't called in a long time and I don't live in the state so of course I hadn't had an opportunity to visit them but I will say this when I talked to him the first minute on the telephone this 80 year old man was spent with him crying because he was so happy to have heard from me and he got all his faculties at 80 something years old he knew exactly who I who I was and so it humbled me and I was able to tell him that I loved him and when I'm back in Jersey in a few weeks you know I'm gonna go by and I'm gonna visit him and I meant it and I want to give him his flowers while he's here to smell them. And I want to encourage our listeners tonight to share some flowers with your loved ones real soon. Ziggy Marley had a song that drew me in from the first time I heard it. It's called Love Is My Religion. And the lyrics go in part, all my days I've been searching to find out what life is really worth. Through the books and the Bibles, the time I've made up my mind. I don't condemn, I don't convert. This is a call and have you heard. Love is my religion. That's the mirth. Marcus is unrelated rant. It ain't got nothing to do with what we ain't here talking about tonight. I want to remind everybody that independence is the key to building your legacy. I also want to say peace to all the stars and all of the squares. I also want to remind you of our programming right here, Legacy Internet Radio, tomorrow, Tuesday night, and live in radio, 7 to 9. Wednesday, the Green Room with Jay Grizzly and Lisa P, 7 to 9. Thursday, did they just play that, the music only show? 7 to 9, Friday, replaying what you're hearing right now. You know how to have Marcus J7 until Saturday all day. Did they just play that? And at 7 o'clock Saturday night, you got Deep House Sessions with DJ Renee Melendez. Appreciate everybody saying, staying here with us tonight at this late hour. I also want to remind you, in the abundance of water, the fool is thirsty. Those are the words of Bob Marley. And you know how to have Marcus J. Be back here next week. Peace.